Now then, today I'm back up at my car cleaning, not to get a fancy detail on the mini truck, but to have a look around the gaffer's latest purchase, the G87 M2. This is the first one that I've had a good snoop around in, and you've probably already seen this and doing the rounds on the internet over the past few weeks, because what maniac could bag an M car? And that's spoilers a bit Marmite too, isn't it? Anyway, this wouldn't be a my car cleaning video without some form of detailing, so before we get into what I think about this new generation M2, we're going to get it outside, prep and clean it with a lovely little care package the guys at Garage Therapy have sent me, and I'll also tell you how you can win a £50 gift voucher to use on my car cleaning's website in case there are any products that you fancy picking up for yourself. So, go grab yourself a cuppa, get sat down, and let's get into it. <laughs> Yep, here it is. If you've opened up Instagram at any point over the last month, you've probably seen this on your feed. Personally, I'm in the love it camp. I'm all for modifications, and if you want to spend your hard-earned money on an M car, which is well over 75 grand once you've added all your options, just to slam it on the floor so it looks good in photos, I'm all for it. We'll get into the details of why Amar has built this car the way he has later on in the video, but first off, we best get it nice and clean. He's done that many photo shoots in it over the past few weeks, it is hanging. Luckily though, the guys over at Garage Therapy have sent us a box full to the brim with their products. I'm talking shampoos, pre-washes, mitts and drying towels, you know, the full shebang. So we're going to test them out on the M2. Don't worry, I'll get some nicer shots of this once it's clean because there are some lovely bits installed in it already and I'll go through them all in a sec. But if you want to be in with a chance of winning a £50 gift voucher for My Car Cleaning's website to spend on whatever you want, all you have to do is leave this video a like and comment something you like or dislike about the M2. It's as simple as that. You can always click subscribe while you're down there if you really want to. I'm not far off a million subscribers now, just another 984,000 to go. A winner will be chosen at random, so make sure you've got your notifications turned on so you don't miss the announcement. Anyway, let's get outside so we can take a closer look around the car. Right, so, we've got the car outside. Sorry about the wind noise, there's nothing I can do about that. But, you can see it in a little bit more detail now. So yeah, brand new BMW M2. I haven't actually driven one of these yet. I've been in the M240i, which was an absolute hoon, but these come in rear-wheel drive only, which is uh, even better in my opinion. So Amar's in there just getting the stuff ready because we are going to give this a clean with the garage therapy stuff that we've been sent. But you can just see everything in a bit more detail now. So parts, we have a Maxton Design carbon range spoiler with the light bar that goes across. You probably saw that when I was pulling it out. It looks absolutely amazing. We have R44 diffuser side skirts and at the front Amar was just telling me that the splitter comes in all different parts we've obviously got these which are sort of ducked in for the charge coolers I'd imagine you've got the carbon splitter at the front then you've got this sort of like lower grill as well which looks fucking brilliant to be honest he's done the yellow modules in the front so the DRLs are yellow you might have seen that on Matt Armstrong's G80 that he's rebuilding the R44 wing mirror covers which are brilliant as well and the main talking point about this car you've probably seen it on instagram because he's had that many people looking at it it's on bags so he hasn't aired it out yet when we take it back in we will air it out so you can see what it looks like you might have seen it in pictures with different wheels on but we're living in the northeast of england and yeah the one time i turn around there's actually no pothole another thing as well miltech system sounds amazing so yeah we're going to get the jet wash fired up get this puppy clean. I've also got a lovely M3 over there as well which you might have a look around later on too. First things first is wheels. Now it doesn't really matter if you do these at the beginning or at the end but they're usually the muckiest bit so it's good to just get them out of the way. I mentioned before Garage Therapy have sent us over a box of goodies and to begin with we're going to be using their fallout remover to break down all the dried on brake dust and road grime. Once that's worked its magic you can rinse it off and then go to town on the wheels with their dedicated wheel shampoo which is a first for me. I thought all shampoos would be the same but clearly not. They've included this little wheel mitt which is really handy to get in all the little details around your spokes because your normal size microfiber mitts are usually a bit too big to get in all these cracks. But because the brakes on this M2 are like dinner plates, Amar found it much quicker to get in there with a pair of wheel brushes and it's especially tight around that caliper. Huge. 
On to probably the most important part of the process now, pre-wash. This and snow foam are the two stages that you should always carry out before you make contact with the paint because it's just going to get rid of as much dirt as possible, meaning you reduce the risk of creating any scratches. Just like the fallout you used on your wheels, after you've sprayed it on and let it settle, you just need to rinse it off. Same again with your snow foam. Just make sure you don't put your camera directly downwind or you'll end up taking a money shot. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you got out the camera. Same rules apply, just let it dwell. I love that word. And then just rinse it off. You could then, if you really wanted to, give the car a spray with your shampoo using your spray lance, so all of your product is already on the car. But since we're doing this in Category 5 hurricane conditions, we opted for the old school method of banging it in a bucket. We use Garage Therapy's One Shampoo V2 and their enormous microfiber wash pad to complete the contact wash. This pad holds in so much product, you could do an entire panel if you really wanted to. Remember, if there are any products you like the look of in this video, they are all available on My Car Cleaning's website, and you can use my code LUCKSHIP10 when checking out to get 10% off over 2,000 different detailing products. With the contact wash complete and all of the suds rinsed off, it was time to get it back in the detailing bay to carry out the finishing touches, and I've got to say, the yellow DRLs look spot on contrasting against that black paint. Amar made light work of drying the car with the super absorbent drying towel, and then we moved on to the windows, because even after a good going over with shampoo and everything else, they still had a few streaks. Not anymore though. Good gear. To give the clean paint work an extra bit of shine, we stuck a layer of quick detailer across all the black bits, and finally it was time for the last stage. Garage Therapy's Tire Serum. To apply this, Amar was using the MCC tire brush, and once all four corners were coated, we were done. Now I know fine well that not everybody likes backed cars. I might stick some on the mini truck purely for the hell of it, but on a performance car I can understand why everyone would be outraged. Gotta say though, the 3H air ride on this car is flawless. I've never been in a car with it fitted before, but if I were to jump in this without knowing there was a compressor in the boot, I wouldn't bat an eyelid over the ride quality. I'm not saying it's like a Rolls Royce, obviously, but I mean, no M car is. It would be nice to check out a regular M2 to see if there's a noticeable improvement, so if you have one, let me know. But judging how well this thing handles on bags, I can't really envisage it being a million times better on proper dampers. But with all of that being said, what is it like to drive on the road? Well, let's jump in and just take a quick look at that interior first, eh? From the moment you sit behind the wheel of this thing, you can tell it's a step up from the previous generation. There were lots of photos circulating around of the G80 M3's interior prior to its release, and I'm glad to say that you have a near enough carbon copy of it in here. Carbon being the key word, it is everywhere. The wraparound display really brings the interior into the 21st century after what was quite a disappointing setup in the F-Series BMWs. And overall, I think it's quite a nice looking piece of kit. The trouble is, you're always going to have people comparing it to the last generation, and although looks are subjective, I think 9 out of 10 people would say it's uglier than the last one. I genuinely believe that the F87 M2 was the nicest looking car to roll off BMW production lines since the E30 M3 back in the day, so this one didn't really stand a chance, did it? We both agreed that BMW chose the wrong colour to use to advertise this car in. The Zandvoort blue just didn't hit the spot, but they made the same mistake with the G80 M3 when they released pictures of it in that hangover piss shade of yellow. Black, although it's a ball ache to keep clean, is probably the best option to go for on these new generation beamers, because it almost hides some of those garish looks. I mentioned earlier that this is an extremely high spec. In fact, when I was chatting to Amar, he said the only thing he didn't spec was the manual gearbox. That might sound like sacrilege to a few years, but I mean, he's fitted air ride to it, so what do you expect? However, if you're just after a point and squirt track ready weapon, which you can drive one handed whilst eating an ice cream, then auto is the way to go. And they are exceptionally good in these new BMs, as I shall now demonstrate with a couple of good old fashioned pulls. It's funny because Amar also has an i4 M50, which you might have seen in the background of one of the shots earlier on, which if anything is quicker than this G87 M2 in a straight line. But once the Miltech system fires up and you can feel the car punching its way through the gears, you cannot convince me that electric is the way to go. Anyway, 
I'm going to keep this short, it's not a thorough review after all, I just wanted to show off this particular one, because there aren't many people brave enough to send it with modifications on a brand new M car. If you'd like to see a full comprehensive review of the M2, then I might have missed the hype train by now, but if Chris Harris's video wasn't good enough for you, I'm sure you can let me know and I'll try and knock one up. Remember to enter the giveaway, it's completely free, all you have to do is drop this video a like and leave a comment about the M2. I'll announce the winner in one of the next few videos that I've got lined up. I've been busy stockpiling videos to try and keep the upload schedule somewhat consistent, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!